grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The Word of God that we consider this morning is from the book of Luke, the 17th chapter, verses 1 through 10. Just want to remind you of what the disciples asked our Savior Jesus Christ. They simply said, Lord, increase our faith. Ongoing education is becoming, I think, more and more prevalent in our society. Some jobs you have to have that master's degree, that PhD, in order to even have the job. And in so many other areas of work, there's got to be continuing education, even in the trades, car mechanics, some construction workers, ongoing education, lawyers, tax preparers, doctors and nurses, ongoing education is vitally important, if not essential. So then you just have to ask yourself, if ongoing education is so important for a brief time in my life, what about ongoing education for my spiritual life? For something that's going to last into eternity. So the disciples had the right idea, and Lord willing, we learn from them today that we say with them to our Savior Jesus, Lord, increase our faith. And the reason they said, Lord, increase our faith is so that they could see temptation and overcome it. And then Jesus adds another reason as to why we would want to pray, Lord, increase our faith, and that's simply so that we understand and come to appreciate God's grace, the love that he has for each and every one of us. So after the disciples listened to Jesus tell them a couple of things, they said, Lord, increase our faith. But before we look at their reasons for asking that question, for making that request, I want us to think of another reason for saying, Lord, increase our faith. Lord, help us to have faith, not just in something, but Lord, increase our faith in Jesus Christ as our Savior from sin. The importance of faith. Think of what the Apostle Paul wrote to the Romans. He said, a person is justified by faith. To be justified means that God looks at you and says, you're innocent. God looks at you and says that you're not guilty of anything wrong that you've ever done in your life. Faith receives. Faith receives as a free gift that forgiveness of sins that Jesus earned for the world, for the entire world when he died on the cross. Remember, John the Baptist said, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Faith receives that gift of forgiveness. And when we have that, then we can have peace. Our guilt is gone because all our sins are gone. When that's true, there's another blessing to our faith in Jesus Christ. Or God simply said, salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given a man, among men by which we must be saved. Faith in Jesus Christ. Faith in Jesus Christ that, that he lived a perfect life because I couldn't. That he suffered God's eternal punishment for the sins because I couldn't. Because he offered to God that one acceptable payment for sins because I couldn't. Faith reserves for me a place in heaven's eternal glory. That's mine. That's yours. That's anybody's who believes in Jesus Christ. Heaven is our home. And for those two reasons, for that reason we say, Lord... Increase our faith so that I continue to hold on to Jesus Christ no matter how difficult or chaotic my life may be. But back to the disciples. They asked Jesus to increase their faith for a specific reason so that they could overcome temptation in their life. This is what Jesus said. Things that cause people to sin are bound to come. In other words, temptation is just going to happen. Nobody tempts me to sleep in to miss worship. It just happens. Nobody tempts a child to take the money off mom and dad's dresser. It just happens. Nobody tempts me to speed when I'm late for a meeting. It just happens. Temptation is just out there in the world. But this is what Jesus said then. He said, but woe 
to that person through whom they come. Whoa, a warning. Anybody who tempts anyone else to ever commit a sin, and we go, ah, not me, Lord. You know, don't look at me. I never, never placed a temptation in front of anybody else. Really. Did you ever slide that alcoholic drink over to that person you knew already had enough to drink? Did you ever seduce anyone to have sex with you and they weren't married to you? Did you ever, when you were like not old enough, encourage one of your friends to smoke with you, to do illegal drugs with you? Did you ever as a child tempt one of your friends or one of your classmates to disobey their parents or disrespect their teacher? You know, if we're going to really be honest, in so many different ways, so many different times, so many different people, we have placed so many temptations in front of other people. But then again, we're going to try to defend ourselves. We're going to say, Lord, okay, yeah, I did that. I did put that temptation in front of them, but I never, ever caused them to sin. And the Lord says, you know what, I really don't care. He says, whoever causes someone who said... Woe to that person through whom temptation comes. It would be better for him to be thrown into the sea with a millstone tied around his neck than for him to ever cause one of these little ones to sin. So watch yourselves. The warning, whoever causes someone to sin, tempts someone to commit a sin, is in trouble. Not only have we possibly led someone to do something wrong that causes them to get in trouble on this earth, We've sinned. And did you notice what the Lord says should happen to the person who tempts another person to sin? Millstone hung around our neck and we'd be tossed into the sea. In other words, death. That's what sin does. It kills us. Literally, the wages of sin is death. It kills us. It keeps us out of God's family so that we can't enjoy His blessings. It kills us because it keeps us out of heaven so that we can never enjoy that eternal glory. And if we can't have that eternal glory in eternity, I hate to say this, but it's true. If we can't have eternal glory in eternity, then all we have left is eternal hell. And so the disciples pleaded with Jesus, increase our faith. We plead with Jesus. We who have committed these very same sins and so many more, we plead with Jesus, increase our faith first so that I see that cross and understand what happened on that cross. That on that cross, Jesus died for me. All of my sins, gone. All of God's anger, satisfied. Death is opened up and I will live because of faith in Jesus Christ. I will live in heaven's eternal glory. Lord, increase my faith so that I don't despair and live my life in joy because of Jesus Christ. And then, Lord, increase my faith so that I can avoid the sin, so that I do not sin. Drive your love deeper and deeper into my heart. Fill my heart with your love. And through that love, empower me and motivate me to know what your will is in my life. And then to do what you direct me to do in your word. Lord, increase my faith so that I can see the dangers of temptations and so that with your help, I can overcome them. Just don't make the excuse, okay? Listen to what Jesus said right after the disciples said, increase our faith. He said, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. 
Sometimes perhaps, I'm not judging anybody, but sometimes perhaps we like to say something like this, you know, I'm a newbie Christian, I'm kind of a weak Christian, and as a result, Lord, I really can't be as strong and do what you want me to do. But what did Jesus just say? If you have the tiniest of faith, you could say to that piano, elevate, go to the other side of the room, drop down gently so that you don't break. Now, everybody's going to sit here and say, hmm, it probably won't happen. Jesus is just giving us a comparison and he's simply saying, even the smallest of faiths, even the smallest of faiths is unable to understand what God's will is for them in their life. It's able to overcome the temptation that we have in our life. But it still doesn't hurt to pray, Lord, increase our faith so I truly do have the power to overcome temptation. So once we ask the Lord to increase our faith so that we can overcome sin, then we might have another problem to deal with. And so that Jesus teaches us to increase our faith so that we come to understand and appreciate God's grace, God's love in our life. And he tells us this story so that we can understand it. He told about a rancher, let's just say, who had a hired hand. And the hired hand is working out in the fields. He's running the cattle. And after his day is over, he comes back to the ranch house. Jesus tells a story and he says, Would the rancher then tell his hired hand, Why don't you sit down at the table? I'll cook supper for you and I'll take care of you right now. He said, No, he wouldn't do that. He would have his hired hand prepare his dinner, serve him. And then he says, After all of that was over, would the hired hand, would the, would the rancher say, Hey, thanks? He says, No. You did what you're supposed to do. And so we say, Lord, increase our faith so that I don't get this idea that if I do what I'm supposed to do, that you're going to love me, that you're going to receive me into your kingdom. It's so easy to think. Don't your kids think that? I mean, really. You tell them, go clean your room. They clean their room and they come out and say, what? What are you going to give me? And I'll tell you what I'm going to give you. Absolutely nothing because I just told you to do it. And that's the same thing here. Sometimes we think, Lord, if I overcome temptation, Lord, if I do what you want to do, you've got to love me. You've got to give me something. You've got to give me your love. You've got to give me eternal salvation. And Jesus says, no, it doesn't work that way. He says this at the very end. He said, so you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. Lord, increase our faith. Help me to understand that what I do in my life does not earn your love, but what I do in my life is an expression of my love for you. It's my way of saying thanks to you for your grace and mercy. Thank you for everything that you have done for me. Lord, increase my faith so that I understand it's not what I do, but it's what you've done. Help me to understand your grace. Help me to understand this word of yours, dear Lord. As the Apostle Paul wrote to the Galatians, it is by grace you have been saved. And grace simply means God's undeserved love for a sinful world. It is by grace you have been saved through, and I don't know if you know the next word. My son owes me a quarter. So if you say the right word, I'll give you the quarter that he owes me, okay? It is by grace you have been saved through... Oh, too many quarters. Sorry. <laughs> See me after church, and if you said the word faith, you've got to be honest, you're in church, right? And I'll give you a quarter, okay? But it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And then it goes on to saying it's not from yourselves. It's a gift of God. It's not by works. No man can boast. Lord, increase my faith. Help me to truly understand. It's not what I do. It's what Jesus did. Help me to understand that it's only by faith that I get that forgiveness. It's only by faith that I get to go to heaven. Help me to understand that, dear Lord and help me to understand that in response to everything that you did for me, I just want to live for you. I just want to obey you. And I just every day want to express my faith and my love for you. 
So I don't know. I don't know how many of you have done continuing education for the jobs that you have, if you got that PhD, if you got that, that master's degree, good. Maybe some of you just like to study for the fun of it, whatever. But good. Go for it. Enjoy it. But as you're doing that, what about your spiritual life? What about your eternal future? I pray that this is our prayer. Lord, increase our faith. Help me to see the temptations that are out there and then give me the strength to avoid them. And then, dear Lord, help me to appreciate your grace, your love, which has led to my forgiveness, which will lead to my salvation. Lord, Increase my faith so that I might live for you here and live with you there in eternity. Amen. Please rise.